Okay, and assessment is uh, not a very easy topic. We all know about Cambridge exams, and the problem is when you talk about preschoolers who are bilingual, they might be very good at speaking, they might be very good at listening and understanding, they're not very good at literacy. What can you expect? Literacy is highly abstract. Uh, you can't expect a four-year-old to read and write. They don't have the motor skills to do that. So how do you assess? How do you track their development? Well, um, and I'd like to paraphrase the fr <laughs> classic here. Each bilingual family is bilingual in its own way. And uh, we all have different goals. For example, for some people, it's important that y your child becomes um, a very well-rounded individual, a very proficient in their second, third, or whatever language, and that they are actively bilingual. And that's it, this is your final goal, and you want to work towards it. And for some, it's uh, being emergent culture, and some people don't require their kids to be actively bilingual. If they um, understand you when you speak English, or German, or French, or Japanese, or Indonesian, fine, great. If they reply to you, even better. If they don't, but they love listening to you sing in Indonesian, <coughs> fantastic, that's all I want. And depending on that, our tools for assessment and our assessment criteria will be different. And uh, mm, who can teach uh, and who can test our kids? First of all, we as parents, because we provide um, a lot of language input and we are very motivated to track our children's development. And then teachers, uh, if your child is enrolled in um, a formal English language program like Playway or uh, no New School of English or something like that, the teachers can help you with that. Um, and even um, Russian teachers can sometimes provide help and support. For example, a speech therapist in my kids' uh, kindergarten is very supportive of us being bilingual, even though my son has some speech problems and they're working on that. Um, the next question is what can be tested? Well, um, everything can be tested. Speaking can be tested, listening can be tested, writing, reading, um, uh, phonemic awareness can be t mm, tested, literacy when they're a bit older. And um, why? Why should we test our kids? Why should we bother? Why should we take uh, this extra load and extra burden and put it on our shoulders? We all have a full-time job. We all have families. We all do the cooking, the cleaning. Why think about assessment? Well, I don't know about your kids. I didn't get a lot of feedback uh, from my kid until he was four year old. <coughs> and I was ready to give up at one point. I'm like, why, why am I doing that? Why am I torturing myself, my family, and my child? Why, when, he, when he's shouting at me in Russian, why do I keep replying in English? What's the point? Where is the progress? What am I doing? Uh, stop it. So. Um, um, we boost our motivation by tracking the progress because um, this doesn't have progress doesn't happen overnight. You don't just wake up speaking English. It's baby steps, um, add um, uh, small things uh, that uh, support every step of the way. Um, well, we spot gaps and address them. And uh, if you're somebody like George Saunders, who's an Australian teacher, uh, who raised his kids uh, to be German English bilinguals, you can publish a book. He published two books, so if you're interested, uh, you can find it on the internet, and it's a great read. So mm, let's talk about vocabulary, because at this age, and I'm talking about kids uh, starting from three to five or six years old, vocabulary is very important. And receptive vocabulary is um, even more important because um, kids, um, they absorb and they don't sometimes uh, give everything back. They don't produce. They, they sort of uh, sit there like a fly on the wall, looking at things, thinking about things. They go through a silent period. And there, is, there are some golden standards in our world, uh, in the teaching world. And there is a Peabody vocabulary test, and there is um, a test like that in Britain as well. Um, 
you can test uh, kids starting from the age of 2.5 and you can end at uh, the age of 99 if you're still here by that time. And the test works like that. Uh, you show your kid a card, it has four mm, pictures, you sa say the word, they point to the pictures, great, you move on to the next card. They make a mistake, you start counting the mistakes. Once they've made six mistakes, you stop and you look at your results. Test gives you a lot of information. Uh, it gives you the score, it gives you the percentile, which means that if your kid is in the 35th percentile, he is better or at the same level as 35% of the kids who've taken this test. Uh, it gives you um, a part, uh, part of speech analysis, like your kid did better in nouns than in verbs, uh, and it gives you some recommendations. The test is quite expensive, but the, mm, the most important part is that it's not available in Russia. You can't get it. I've, I've written to Pearson Clinical, and they said, sorry, mate, can't get it. You're a Russian teacher. No can do. Bye. I'm like, fine, what can I do? And then I turned to uh, Cambridge and Learners exam range because I started flipping through Russian psychological books, um, started reading lots of research, and I came across a research um, in biling uh, Russian English bilingual, and what they did is they took a list of words, and they took 10 random words, and they asked kids to point out the words out, showing them the pictures, and they said, okay, this kid named seven words correctly, and that means that they approximately know 70% of the list. I'm like, yeah, fine, I can do that. So I took uh, three lists, some mm, thematic vocabulary for starters, movers, and flyers exam. I've chosen um, my random words. So uh, the list contains approximately 550 nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And then I started thinking about the pictures because my son is four years old. He needs the pictures. He can't define what a cat is, but he can show this is a cat. So um, I tried Oxford Picture Dictionary. No, bad idea. Too many words on one page. Some words were missing. Um, I had to flip through the book. Okay. And then I remembered there is an app. And um, it's uh, made by Cambridge. It's called Word Fun World. It's uh, very cheap. It comes at uh, the price of 75 rubles. It's available on App Store. They say that it's coming to uh, Android Store soon, Google Play. But they've been saying that for over two years now, so I'm not sure. But um, it has all the pictures from the mm, exam list. And uh, all you need to do is print out the list, uh, download the app, unlock all the words in the settings to get rid of this lock, little lock um, icon. And then you just uh, go from one topic to another, asking the words in random and ticking the words your child knows and marking the words your child doesn't know. And if the child is small, like mine, you can cover part of the screen with paper. Yeah, it's old school, but it works to limit the exposure. So like, say, six words are better than 12 words. <laughs> and um, well, as a result, I got a number that my child can point to 68% of the words on the list, which is uh, not bad because mm, Cookie Monster is only four, and the list is uh, pitched at A2 level uh, flyers. Well, uh, the, this uh, receptive vocabulary test also gave me some understanding of his strongest and weakest points. So you can see that he's quite good um, at animals. He is bad at health. He couldn't point uh, at a nurse. Okay, I will deal with that. I can do that. <laughs> well, then mm, speaking. Somehow speaking is very important for Russian people. We all want our children and ourselves to be able to speak. Um, because maybe because uh, we are good at reading and we forget about writing. Um, and um, I've chosen some principles for myself which I follow when I try to assess my son's progress is I do the testing at regular intervals. I don't do that every day. I don't record his every minute of waking time uh, because I won't be able to analyze all of that. So I give him a task and I record him every three to six months. And then anal I analyze it mm, 
Uh, and I base my analysis on the criteria which I find useful for me at this particular moment of his development. Um, and I test his L1 as well, because his Russian is not set in stone at this age. He is going through development, through these um, different stages as well. So it's a good idea to compare his L1 and L2. And um, well, the first test is 20 questions. I came across this idea when my son was about to celebrate his second birthday and I was flipping through some English uh, magazines for parents and like there was an idea that if you ask your child to, uh, the same questions uh, every year, you will get a glimpse at his language development and uh, you will be able to understand your child better. And this will be, it will be a, like a keepsake uh, to keep, to treasure, to embarrass your son at his wedding, for example. And um, the questions are like that. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite outfit? What's your favorite snack? What do you want to be when you grow up? And what I noticed this year, because before that he couldn't really uh, answer the questions. So when he was two, I jotted down the question, the answers myself. Like, I think his favorite fruit is peach. Okay, fine, fine. Question three, peach. Last year, he was able to give me some answers. <laughs> this year, I have an eight minute video of him answering all the questions. And um, mm, he, um, and that showed me that his listening comprehension is getting better. His receptive vocabulary is getting better. Um, because the only problem he had with my question was what outfit. And he was able to ask me in English, what's an outfit, mommy? I'm like, this is the clothes you wear. Oh, OK, jeans, fine. And um, then uh, it hel helps you, again, to get to know your child better. Because when I ask him a question, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I want to be a doctor. I'm like, huh, what kind of doctor? A kid's doctor. Okay, they give injections. Yes, but to other kids, I'm like, fine, fingers crossed you'll forget about this idea. But, okay, and then um, another tool that I've been using with my son is picture story. Masha has been talking about using storyboards. <laughs> well, you can use them in different ways. Mm. And there are different sources that you can use to get a, pic a good picture. First of all, there's Do and Understand by um, Günther Gengros and Herbert Puchter. This is a, a very old book. It was published in 1996. It's still available online, like you can get it. And the picture, the black and white picture, which I used um, with my son is in this book. You can use Playway pictures. Uh, it's like there's a second edition, first edition, rainbow edition, pick, pick your poison. And then um, uh, there's, um, there are also past papers from Cambridge Jan, Jan Lerner's exams, uh, flyers, movers, starters. They all have a picture story as part of their speaking paper. And again, you can find them online. You can buy the book and um, use that picture. They are all good. The only difference is some of them are more complex than others. For instance, I think uh, Cambridge starters use only three pictures, yes? Um, Ah, there's no, okay, uh, then movers, three pictures only. And um, in uh, Do and Understand, there are nine pictures for one story. Well, anyway, I used to Do and Understand. So the, what I asked uh, my son to do, I showed him the picture. He had never seen it before. And I'm like, okay, Cookie, here's a story. I'd like to hear it. Please tell me this story. But I had to prompt him. The story starts like that. Um, and this is what I got. Uh, this is Russian. Uh, the blue uh, words um, uh, are my prompting. So, Papa потерял ботинки. Pause. Он посмотрел под кроватью? Нету. Он посмотрел вот здесь? Нету. Посмотрел в шкафу? Нету. Посмотрел в раковине? Нету. Посмотрел здесь? Нету. That's me prompting. А это кто? Мама. Мама? Yeah, the reply was in English. А почему мама такая маленькая? Не знаю. Или дочка? 
дочка. And then he started thinking um, out loud. А дальше где папа нарисован? А, вот дочка. And the, he finished the story, daddy got his boots <laughs> in the end. And this is his English story. Uh, it's about a cat and the bird. So the cat is on, sitting on the window. Cat is looking outside. I don't know, um, he had difficulty understanding the story, so I prompted, what is this? Uh, bird, cat is, um, is, want to eat the bird, bird is eating some cake, and the cat wants some cake too, some chicken, and cat go get your plate. That's what I tell him all the time, cookie, go get your plate, get her plate, and cat, Razvila, what happened, Cookie? Cat destroyed the plate. I realized, okay, my son has forgotten the word break. Okay, fine, he said destroyed. Why? Cat destroyed the plate? Yeah, and the bird is here, and some chicken. And where's the bird? I was trying to elicit in the tree. Here, and where's here? What? <laughs> okay, where's here, what is it? I don't know, mommy. So the, uh, basically, this is um, telling me, leave me alone. I don't know, <laughs> this is his way of saying that. Uh, so what can we get from the story? Because on its own, this is just um, a small kid rambling about something, and it doesn't really give us much information. So these are the criteria I've chosen. Story length, so uh, we can see that his English story was twice as long as his Russian story. Uh, prompting, yes, in both cases. Pauses, he made more pauses and longer pauses in Russian than in English. Uh, uh, speaking rate, by the way, adults speak at the rate of uh, approximately 125 words per minute. Well, this is the number I found on the internet yesterday. Well, um, my kid speaks at the rate of 36 words per minute for Russian and 38 for English. Approximately the same rate indicating kind of same level of fluency. Then uh, false tenses, one for a Russian past, two for English, present simple, present continuous. False starts, self-corrections, zero for Russian, four for English. Uh, mistakes, uh, and here I have to say that I don't um, count every single mistake, I count types. Zero for Russian and three for English articles, third person singular, and, first, uh, and one Russian word. And then strategies, communicative strategies to um, sort of work around some language problems. Well, it's the same for English and Russian, using this or here, when he doesn't know the place, he doesn't know how to describe it. Um, I'll be tracking my son's progress, but this showed me that um, he can do approximately equally well in Russian and in English <coughs> when we talk about this storytelling task. And um, then to finish off, uh, there's a li little funny formula if you are into math or into formulas. <laughs> Uh, there was a guy called Martin Edelman who came up with the formula in 1969 and there's an article available online. Uh, he was assessing bilingual uh, school children. And uh, you what you need to do is you need your child to um, ask, uh, you need to ask your child to name all the words he knows from a certain domain, for example, school, in 45 seconds, you repeat this for the second language, and then you use this number of Russian words um, minus number of English words divided by the larger of the above two plus one divided by two, and if you get um, uh, 0.5, that means balance. Your child is a, a well-balanced bilingual individual. Congratulations. If uh, you get the zero, uh, it means zero responses in English, and one zero, oh, zero, zero means zero responses in Russian, and one means zero responses in English. Well, okay, I tested my kid, and this is what I get. School, um, 0.56 indicated that Russian is dominant, uh, slightly. Uh, animals, 06, again, Russian is dominant. Food, 042, English is dominant. And home, 04, English is dominant. But again, this is um, not very reliable because I, um, I've tried several times and I got different results. 
I will be using this formula in the future again, but I will only mm, consider it if I get something dr dramatically different. If I get, let's uh, say, 0.56, and next time I will get um, 0.8 or 0.8, something like that. Again, um, if you're into math and you like numbers and you like playing with that, this is your formula. Um, so the takeaway from the today's presentation, assess at regular intervals, don't turn it into a daytime job, you already have one. Focus on certain criteria, because without the, um, cri the criteria, it doesn't give you much. This is just uh, something. Uh, compare one and L2, compare your child now and m m months ago or years ago, don't compare it to uh, Marsha online <laughs> or Nasta, your neighbors kid. Um, track your child's development over time and remember your goals. Remember that um, life goes on, the world um, uh, is turning and if your goals or your life circumstances have changed, never mind, change your goals, uh, adjust your criteria, adjust your assessment tools, move on, it's all fine, we're all different. Okay, these are the resources. If you want my presentation, I can give it to you. Uh, and all the resources I've used are here. And thank you, everybody here, for listening. Thank you, my son, Fyodor Kakuki Monster, for inspiring and challenging me every day and every step of the way. Thank you, Anka. And thank you, Paxil, for free pictures. And thank you, Ray, for giving this opportunity. Do you assess in some other ways? Because this was very interesting. I personally do now every month. I uh, I take some notes during months, and then I at the end of the month I try to analyze what's changed. For example, which grammatical structures appeared and which mistakes went away. Uh, but I'd like to do this 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 kind of assessment too. So do you what, what other ways? Do you record uh, so, some things? Um, Just share. Okay, um, I take videos of my son and uh, I record um, his speech. Uh, I just do it at certain intervals. I don't do it every day. The reason I do it is that um, once my son, um, my son is growing and constantly changing, and my criteria for assessment can change too once he's five years old, for example, or six or seven. And that, m if I have a video on, or an audio file, that means that I can find it on my computer and I have a special folder for that. I try to keep things organized uh, in this way. I can open it and I can reassess this file uh, using my new criteria. <coughs> I just wonder, uh, are you um, Uncle Mom's working or uh, is it your job actually? No, that's not my job. I work for BKC International House. I have 25 hours of uh, actual teaching. I teach preschoolers, uh, teenagers, well, you name it. Oh my God. Pardon? She doesn't well. Wow, uh, I suppose. So it's 50 hours. Yeah, 20, 25 hours of yeah. instruction and 25 hours of preparation, I assume. Uh, I've been doing that for a long time, so can, can, I, um, okay. can I not comment on the preparation <laughs> stage? Okay, thanks a lot. Any other questions? Yep, one second. I'm sorry if I root um, maybe some okay. question for, for my question for you. Uh, don't you think that uh, such testing for a child is uh, a big um, problem maybe because uh, you're testing, testing and then if something not right you'll try to do the best for him but he had uh, he has uh, more mm, more working. He, he need to work more than uh, and well, uh, I think I got the question. Uh, uh, well, first of all, there was nothing rude in your question. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't done as a test. It was done as a game. And he got a reward. So I'm like, okay, let uh, you. He's very reluctant when I ask him mm, to do something specific. So um, I negotiated and I bargained and I bribed him. And I, I did uh, what a parent does when uh, his child refuses to eat his vegetables. So this is nothing um, 
um, there's, mm, there's no difference between basically parenting. <laughs> well, uh, oh, this, research, this research uh, was done uh, in the course of several months in small uh, increments and I just presented the results. It's not that I think that Vita comes home after 25 hours of teaching at BKC and says, okay, my... And now I'm going to test you. Sit down. Yeah. Hands on the table. No cheating. Vita, <laughs> uh, could you clarify how you use the, um, the Cambridge exams vocabulary cards yeah. to test the vocabulary? Just once again, I'm not sure if I got it right. Um. So uh, there is an application because you can create your own cards, but uh, it will take you a lot of time. But there are cards in like handbooks and in their materials. Uh, yes, the reason I find application um, uh, easier to use is because uh, all the words are separated into different domains like school, health. Yeah, so uh -huh. you basically use a topic, right? Yeah. And then there is this collection of pictures um, from all three exams or from just one? From all three exams. Um, and your son is, sorry, how old? Four. Five? Four. Four. Four years right. old. So you basically test the ability to, like, rec to recognize the... Uh, recognize the word the and point it out. And point point the correct picture. So what I basically did, I took um, my iPad, I covered part of the words because it was very confusing for him. So there were four to six pictures, including the word I was going to name. And I'm like, okay, can you show me the guitar? And he's like, okay, guitar. And I'm like, tick. And, um, but in the test, isn't it also about saying words and sometimes writing those words? Uh, I mean, like that's true, but uh, my goal was to assess his receptive vocabulary. Receptive, uh, vocabulary. receptive vocabulary doesn't require you using the word. Right, okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, any more questions? No? Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. A very thought-provoking talk. I believe you should go to ITEFL.